First of all, thanks for all the recent subscribers. I've noticed YouTube has started recommending one of my videos recently, so that's where they've come from. Bear in mind, I don't have a professional setup here. All recordings are done on a phone, so please bear that in mind. Hi, today we're going to review this clock, which I got, which is available on AliExpress uh, for the price of some of about £4.96, I think it was, plus VAT, with free shipping. I bought it as a curiosity item because regular viewers will know that I make electronics to sell on eBay. Uh, I've made a few clocks, particularly ones that are controlled by the network time service. Um, so I just thought I'd buy this just to see what competition I'm up against. Now, first impressions, it's very light. Now for four quid, I'm not expecting anything brilliant. Uh, now, if you look at the box, there's some brilliant instructions there. Everything's spelt wrong. Choking hazard. Snow parts. Not for children under three years. Please use under supervision of adult. Please return packaging for future reference. Well, reference is spelt wrong as well. Um, okay, well, it's made by Falloon. Now, I've seen quite a lot of reviews on these and they say, rather misleadingly, that it's battery operated and it isn't. It's actually mains powered uh, via a USB cable. So you just need to use a phone charger to power it. The battery is purely for backup in case the power fails. It will not power the display. So that is very misleading and I've noticed a lot of negative reviews saying that it doesn't work off batteries. Uh, and that's simply because it ain't a battery power clock and the advert is a bit wrong, so what I'm going to do is take it out of the box. Uh, it's a very dark and dingy day today, so let me get the lighting done. It's by no means a professional setup here, so just bear with me. So I've got the instructions. Um, right, let's have a look. Yeah, that. so fairly comprehensive instructions, I'd say. It actually says in the instructions here that it needs to be plugged into a USB power supply. Obviously, a lot of people that wrote, wrote those reviews didn't bother reading the manual. It is actually, it says it quite clearly at the top. Um, right, okay, so the instructions. Um, That's quite easy to read. Uh, no ching bush there. Um, right. Unit itself. Get a remote control, power cable, and some mounting pins. It's very, very light. Hmm. I wonder if it's actually LCD, not LED. Um, that's where your backup battery goes, which takes some um, AAA batteries, which of course aren't included. I don't know how many it takes, looks like two. Oh, I haven't got any to try that feature, so set buttons on the back. Um, looking through the vents, I can see, oh these are circuit board in there. It doesn't use conventional LED modules by the look of it. The LEDs are actually sort of directly to the circuit board and there's a diffusing assembly over the top. Uh, if you can try and see through the vents. Yeah, you can just see the white circuit board there. Oh, uh, now it comes apart. I can't see any screws. Ah, there we go, look. So, looks like that comes apart fairly easy. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll power it up and see what it does. Right, plug into a power bank. Oh, turn that round so you can see it. It's got a nice bright clear display. Yeah, apparently it's got automatic brightness. Let's have a look. Set. Simple. Okay. Look at the exit and it's uh, set. Now I suppose you can just type that in. So that's the, the 
Okay. Set. 17. Well, that's easy to set, isn't it? Month is 12. Day is 7. There we go. Well, that's dead easy to set up. What other functions have we got? Brightness control. Level 10. It's supposed to have automatic on it. Okay, um, thought it's supposed to have automatic. Oh, there we go. Automatic brightness. It's got a timer function as well. Count up and count down timer. And set your time on there. So it's, it's uh, bear with me. Instructions time, I think. It's got on two alarms that can be set as well. Short press to display time. Okay. Long press. Ah, that's your count up timer. All right, fair enough. That stops it. Well, nothing really special about it. Now, the other thing is looking through the instructions to exit the timer mode, you've actually got to turn it off and back on again to get to the clock display, which is a bit of a niggle. And setting the clock, you can't zero the seconds either, like my clock that I made. Uh, the true test of this is going to be. Leave it on for a couple of weeks and see if it loses any time. Other than that, in comparison to what I've been making and selling on eBay, I think it's actually pretty good. It's uh, not a bad little unit. Nice bright display that you can see from a distance. For four quid, I think uh, that's okay. Um, I've been seen them being sold on Amazon for about £30. This is a 13-inch version. They also do a 16-inch version, which is about £40 to £45. But I say this was on AliExpress in a sale for four pound ninety six or something like that, possibly eighteen free shipping. So it works out about six pound, which is bugger all. So I think it's actually not a bad little unit. Um, right, let's see if I can take it apart. The real problem with this is as a hobbyist, me making clocks to sell on eBay. When you can buy stuff like this, it just doesn't. It, it isn't worthwhile unless you're making something special make an electronic project to sell on ebay just it's just not worth it and especially when you get something this good for so cheap i say the true test is going to be if it will actually keep its time now let me spare me the while i try and get this thing apart well i spent 10, 10 minutes trying to get that apart and i don't think i'm going to be able to get it apart without destroying it so I think we'll either tear down video. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it on test for a couple of weeks and say how well it's good at keeping the time and then uh, do a final update on it. Well, I've been using this clock for a week now and it's got a couple of little problems that I'd like to point out. First of all, after a week it gained about 10 seconds in comparison to my clock that I made myself that loses about a second in the same period of time so not ideal uh, but after a month you probably have to keep putting it right uh, second thing uh, the thermometer it's indicating 18 degrees and it's actually 21 and a half in here so that's about two and a half degrees out um, the automatic brightness is not very sensitive at all it's actually a minimum brightness at the moment you can tell because the curl one's stopped flashing. Uh, now it's in a very overcast dark day today, so it does actually look quite bright on the camera, but believe me, it's not. Now even with the lights on, it still stays at minimum brightness. Now earlier in the video, it looked bright because I had the light directly above it. And to get the automatic brightness to work, you shine a torch on the sensor. You'll see it get brighter. That's the only way it will work. Normal lighting conditions, it will not get brighter, the minimum brightness, unless it, the sun gets onto it. You can see the colors are starting to flash now as the brightness increases. 
it's gone back to my minimum brightness. Other than that, it's not a bad clock. Um, is it better than something I can make myself? Style wise, case wise, yes. Electronics wise, I'm sure I can make something better myself. Uh, but I think the next thing to do on this with this clock is to uh, try and fix some of the problems. Right, see if we can improve the sensitivity of automatic brightness and see if we can do something with that sensor so it shows the temperature more accurately. Not sure what, but I think the set of the light sensor can be fixed by putting a, a resistor in series with a light sensor, maybe. Uh, the first thing I have to take it apart, but altogether, yeah, for what it costs, it's not bad. But to bear in mind, about once a month, you'll probably have to put it right. So, yeah, um, that's the Falloon 13 inch digital clock. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.